so I'm going to bring to you the discussion about quality and where, where does quality come into play as I set the stage for our further discussions about data integrity. So our learning objectives, objectives for this section really to gain an understanding about what the basic characteristics of clinical trials and quality are um, and the roles that quality management systems, quality by design principles and things like risk-based monitoring play in ensuring data reliability and our protection of our trial participants. So when I think about the importance of quality in clinical research, I'm really thinking about clinical research as the means by which preventive, diagnostic, and therapeutic interventions are evaluated. These are relied on not just by industry and regulators for decision making, but importantly by patients and their caretakers, and by physicians and other medical personnel making important decisions. So some reminders about what is a clinical trial of quality. So first of all, the scientific question it addresses has to be important. There is a need to produce high quality evidence to inform decision making on use of the preventive diagnostic or therapeutic intervention to start with. And then the trial design is adequate to answer the scientific question being asked, such that if the study is actually well conducted, the results will be considered credible. And then that the data produced are sufficiently accurate and reliable. In other words, they're fit for purpose, not perfect, but fit for purpose, so that they can be used for decision making. And that while all this is underway, we've managed to protect the right safety and welfare of the participants in the studies. So despite us knowing what we need to do, historically we have faced what I consider system inertia. So we know the increased cost of clinical development programs, in particular the cost attributed to clinical trials, problems with trial conduct persisting, impairing our ability to really get to that high quality evidence that we need. Many of you in the audience have seen the same patterns of critical audit findings over time, and they haven't been changing over the years. Likewise, CEDAR's BIMO inspection program had showed little change in patterns of regulatory violations over the years. So there was a need to change, and we're on that path of change now, I think. Moving from what I consider traditional and reactive approaches to conduct, moving away from silos and organizations that inhibit efficient and, and effective resource management, that inhibit issue identification and evaluation and knowledge sharing. Moving away from traditional, what we consider traditional site monitoring. Monitoring focused largely on source document verification or simple transcription checking. And moving away from the way we assess data reliability, um, occurring primarily after study completion. And this was done historically with the routine sponsor monitor audits and our regulatory inspections. So if you'll bear with me with my somewhat very subjective picture, this is what I think of over the past. I see us having run after fires, small and large, with our buckets of water trying to put them out. So we want to go to this, this new place, this new place where we have proactive quality and risk-based approaches to what we're doing. And so here I'm going to focus briefly on each of these topics on quality management systems, the role of quality by design principles, and within that framework, risk-based monitoring in particular. So first, a very fast look at quality management systems. So basically, a quality management system is an integrated system through which organizations can systematically plan and achieve quality objectives linked to their broader strategic goals. These have been fully implemented across many industries, though use in the clinical development area has been sadly lagging over the years. They're well described in ISO standards, and I'm not going to go into those ISO standards here, although Gail is going to touch on some of those principles in her talk that follows. And so it seems really a reasonable assumption that principles and experiences from other sectors may be leveraged to inform development of quality management systems in the clinical development area. 
Now I'm going to shift gears very quickly on you again and talk about quality by design briefly. So the principles of quality by design. We start with the premise that quality in clinical trials is defined as the absence of errors that matter. Or if I put it into English, more basic English, what do we really need to get right to ensure reliability of results and patient protection? It's based on the assumption that the likelihood of a successful quality trial can be improved through prospective attention to preventing important errors that could undermine our ability to obtain meaningful information from the trial to start with. So this uh, project was originally led by CITI, Clinical Trials Transformation Initiative. And for those of you that aren't familiar with CITI, it's a public-private partnership between the FDA and Duke that was initiated to develop and drive adoption of practices that increase the likelihood of quality and efficiency in clinical trials. Currently, there's more than 80 organizations from across the clinical trial enterprise participating in the city products. And in particular, this QBD project was started to identify the best practices and methods and tools that could be applied to the principles of QBD to the scientific and operational design of our clinical trials. So one of the outputs of the project is something called a principles document. Nothing fancy, just a principles document that describes critical to quality, or CTQ factors, generally relevant to most clinical trials. It emphasizes the criticality of different CTQ factors are based on the type and the design of the trial being conducted, not a one-size-fits-all approach. And it emphasizes the importance of engaging all stakeholders in study development. And this is not just our stakeholders within our firms or our contractors, but importantly, our clinical investigators in site personnel and our patients in understanding. It emphasizes also the importance of not falling into checklist mentalities, but rather these CTQ factors in the principal documents are meant to be used to stir discussions. And it provides these considerations and example questions for each of the factors to spur, again, this cross-functional group discussion. So if you're not, I'm not going to go through the CTQ factors in detail, but I did want to show you just the table of contents of the CTQs. It doesn't matter that you can't see them, because my point here is that many of them address data and data quality. So we actually see this come up four times amongst the factors. So now I'm going to shift again here to talk about risk-based monitoring, which is but one of the outputs of our QBD process. And point out to you the EMA reflection paper on risk quality management in clinical trials. So this really overlaps the principles of QBD and risk-based monitoring, describing key elements of quality, a quality system, and the development of systematic, prioritized, and risk based approaches to management of clinical trials. There's also the FDA guidance on monitoring that was released in 2013. So here again, there's an emphasis on quality as an overarching objective that must be built into the clinical trial. And again, this emphasis on the need for risk assessment to determine critical data and procedures that should be addressed in monitoring. Again, we keep hearing these words, quality, risk assessment. And it reminds us that monitoring is a quality control tool for determining whether key or critical activities are being carried out as planned so that deficiencies can be identified and corrected in a more real-time fashion. So some of the things the guidance points out <coughs> to be considered are the complexity of the study design and the study procedures themselves, the types of study endpoints we're trying to address, the clinical complexity of the study population, that we're going to study, the geography where we're going to conduct the study, the relative experience of our clinical investigators, what types of electronic systems we're going to use, the relative safety of the investigational product and what we know about it already, the stage of the study, importantly, actually the quantity of data that we're going to have to collect and address the needs for. So all many different considerations for consideration and risk assessment. 
So most, most importantly, I think, is that it clearly emphasizes there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to monitoring. And also encourages the use of a variety of monitoring te techniques based on your specific study to include centralized, remote, and on-site monitoring as appropriate. So just some final thoughts before I hand this back off to Gail. If we do these things well, you maintain data integrity and the safety of trial participants and patients in the post-approval realm within or across our clinical development programs. We make available beneficial new therapies for patients based on the foundation of that all-important high-quality evidence. And we have the potential to improve efficiencies and optimize resource utilization not only amongst industry and regulators, but also within our healthcare systems. So, on to my challenge questions. True or false? Only clinical trial data that is 100% accurate may be used by regulators to support regulatory decisions and product labeling. Hands up if you want to say true. Hands up if you want to say false. Ah, everyone's got it. Okay, next. Quality by design principles emphasize which of the following all CTQs are of equal importance in clinical studies. The city principles document should be used as a checklist to ensure you have at least touched on all CTQ factors when assessing your study. The importance of engaging all stakeholders when developing the study protocol. Those who want to say A, B, or C. And of course you're all right because you, you know this stuff. So my final parting comment is this quote that I'm so fond of, quality is never an accident. It's always the result of high intention, sincere efforts, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Gail.